Okay, anyway, hello everyone. I am, of course, Haley. So, uh, let's get back to where we left off. Alright, I'm sorry about the quality, because apparently it doesn't want to do it, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to go along with it. I'm extraordinarily sorry. I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some kind of vacuum with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Suddenly, I heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. The voice was whispering something gently, as if soothing me. And then I realised. It was the voice of that strange girl from the bus. The girl from the dream. But what is she trying to tell me? Who is she? I woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to record a previous day. In a few seconds, all its events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. And uh, not this whole situation, not me being here. It was just wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. I need to turn this down. Because yesterday I fell asleep here just like that, and before that I chatted nicely with the local pioneers, even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened, startled by every little rust rustling, should avoid all contact with potentially hostile creatures. The last day's events were getting hazy, like I had a hungover. This really feels like the morning after a heavy drinking party. This is not flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning, a cryptic instruction from the Divine Comedy. Yes, it's just like that. Oh shit. Hang on, can I go back? Whoa! What do you mean that fall back? Woo! No, what? Go back. Okay. Yes, it's just like that. I can't change your past now. Then again, I probably assessed the situation was acting accordingly. I glanced around trying to figure out whether I had been thrown somewhere else, but Olga's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place except for a pioneer uniform which was hanging from the bedhead. I fumbled with it in distrust and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. Wish I could see myself, but I look like a clown. And for that, I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. I finally found one on the wardrobe door. Holy! I looked at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did the weak stumble go? Where were the bang bags of bangs bags under my eyes? The slouch, that deathly fa fatigue on my face. It seemed that I had not been thrown back in time or into a parallel reality, but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's real simple. Such things happen every day. I took a closer look at the stranger and only then I realised that was actually me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from behind my school and university years. Well, at least that's something. There you go. The person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it, and last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. Ah, screw that. I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock was not lying, breakfast is long over. Oh well, I'll try to find something in the canning. It worked out well yesterday with Sylvie, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. The sun was shining brightly outside, a light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer day. I had not felt so good in the morning for several years. All problems are gone, vanished into clouds that were white as snow. Olga came out of nowhere. Good morning, Simeon. Morning. I smiled, doing my best to show that no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up, but breakfast... Never mind, here, take this. She handed me something wrapped in, pa in paper. 
judging by the oily stains, there had been had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. You gotta wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. Olga quickly ran into the house and came out to shove a small bag into my hands. Inside, I found a toothbrush. So let's find out something else. I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me do your neck and teeth properly this first time. Mills is excuse. You should do it yourself once you learn how to. Do you have to? I'm going to wash myself now. Yeah, right. It could get hooked on the tap and strangle me. Fine, later then. And don't forget about the liner. Pencils, paper, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What line up? What do you mean, what line up? She found. It's Monday today. Weird. By my approximation, it should have been Sunday. Then again, it's just been a day of the week. It's probably the worst thing. Usually we have lineups early in the morning before breakfast, but it's Monday today, so we are having it at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. Alright, but where? At the square. Where else? There was no reason to argue. I headed to the ba bath and bathing place. I knew I could forget about separate showers and toilets, but at sight of this malfunctioning sy symptom, sym Symptom of decaying socialism. A, a funny turtle with a tin shell, four taps in it, cer ceramic belly, I thought. So. I was not a squeamish person, but nevertheless, staying there, I realised that there was still some minimal level of habitual comfort, which I found it troublesome to do without. It off it's often like that when you lose things that you thought were ordinary and common, you suddenly understand just how essential they were. How screwed is, yes, as if I have any choice. The water was ice cold. While washing my hands was not an issue, washing my face and mouth became a big problem. There was no toothpaste in the bag which Olga gave me. I could brush my teeth without it, but there was a small round box wrapped in the towel. Tooth powder. Cute. One point for me being somewhat in the past. I washed myself quite quickly, also due to the ice cold water. Someone was coming quickly, or more like running towards me. I turned around. It was Sylvie dressed in a tracksuit. The girl would probably look good in anything. Pioneer uniform, bikini, probably even a spacesuit. Hey there. What the hell? I, oh, oh hey yo. I mean, wussy. Good morning, yeah. <laughs> Apparently I don't know how to speak English. Oh yeah, real smooth. Why didn't you come to breakfast? I overslept. I said it as if I was proud about it. Oh, <laughs> but Olga gave me some sandwiches. Oh, great then. Don't forget about the lineup. Yeah, sure. As if I could forget. Right, I gotta run. Enjoy yourself. She waved goodbye to me and disappeared around the past bend. Looks like it's a couple of minutes until the lineup. I should pro I should quickly pass by my home to drop off my washing bag and eat the sandwiches and then head to the square. I swung open the door of the camp leader's cabin and rushed inside as if jumping into the last car of a departing train. It didn't turn out to be the best idea because inside I found Olga, who was changing. I froze on the spot trying not to breathe. Finally, the camp leader noticed me. Someone on! I looked away immediately. Have you heard of knocking? Now get out! Yeah, that was real clumsy. Oh, uh, though I did enjoy the sight, you freaking sleazy bastard. Olga followed me out in a minute. Here, take this. Now it is your home too. She handed me a key. I put it in my pocket. Home. Of course, if you disregard how fantastical the current events were, this camp was far from being the worst place on earth, but to call it home? Just after one day spent here, I doubt I'd ever be able to do so. Alright, let's go. We're late. But what about sandwiches? Just eat them on the way. Nom 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 nom. We were passing along the lines of the Pioneer's cabins while I was tucking into the ham sandwiches and Olga kept on talking and talking. She was buzzing like a game of operation with Parkinson's. But I cared about nothing but the food. Understood? 
Huh? You weren't listening. Sorry. Today is the first day of your new life as a pioneer. And you should do your best so that it becomes a happy life. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm serious. A pioneer has many duties. Great responsibility is conferred upon him to participate in social work, to help his juniors, to study and study and study again. We here all are like one big family, and you will become a part of it. Yeah, a part. I'd even sign a party membership card if it could save me from listening to this nonsense. I hope that after your term here is over, you'll keep the most pleasant memories about our camp. Memories that will last your whole life. And when will this term end? Why do you keep asking silly things? It seems I won't get any information from her. Ooh, sorry. A shame, really. This world appears to be so friendly, but it never bothered to introduce itself to me. Perhaps now I can take things somewhat easier than yesterday. It seems like I have some unspoken seized fire with it. It isn't trying to hurt me, but I'm forbidden from asking questions. Of course, this situation isn't a pleasant one, but what can I do about it? A bad peace is better than a good dispute. The most important thing for you now is to make the best of the time you will spend here. I'll do my best. Honestly, I was very tired of this conversation. It would be good to know where that here is. But we came to the square. The pioneers were already lined up. What is... What? Is somebody not here yet? Hmm. Nope. All in. She looked around at her brave pioneer troops. Alright, go stand somewhere. Weird. Why did she tell me there are no more sleeping places? While the chief was running her mouth about our plans for the week, I stared at the people. A few heads away from me stood the electronic. A little further, Lena and Sylvie, and at the end of the line, Villa Lan, Alyssa. Everyone I had met was here. Ogus spoke about some com competitions and it turned my attention to the monument. Gender. I could not remember any re revolutionary with a smaller name. He had a weird posture to as if he was looking around with distrust, maybe contempt, and even disdain. Probably some local leader. Daydreaming again. Sylvie brought me back to reality. Ogre stood nearby. Still remember the plan for the week? The plan? I will never forget the plan. Perfect! She looked at Sylvie. Did you bring it? Yes. Sylvie handed me a piece of paper. It's a checklist. Here are four tasks to check off. Do it all today. Before you start, sign up for a club. There's some clubs in the clubhouse and a musical club is in a separate building. Then visit the infirmary. And finally, visit the library. Got it? Yes. The checklist seemed like a good chance to find out something, since I had to go to places I hadn't been before. Then come on, start right now. What about lunch? Don't worry, I'll bring you more sandwiches. The checklist is more important. Good luck. They departed too fast for me to ask anything else. Missed breakfast, now I miss lunch too. This ain't good. Maybe I'll manage it in time somehow. Lunch starts at 1pm. And again, if I'll go there, I might miss a place from the checklist. Okay, it's too early to go to the canteen anyway. Should we go to the clubhouse, kitchen, infirmary, the library, or the music club? Let's go to the music club. The music club, a small one level building, was located some distance from the other camp buildings. Open a door and entered without hesitation. There were enough instruments for a whole orchestra here, drums, guitars, even a piano. I spent some time looking closely at every instrument, wanting to guess the time period they were from, but suddenly I heard a crawling sound coming from underneath the piano. A girl. Seems like she was looking for something. She was standing on all fours in such a suggestive pose I hesitated to speak at first. Excuse me? Ah, who's there? She tried to stand up, but the bottom... What the f... Bongim... Bottom gzin of the piano prevented her from doing so. Ouch. She struggled out. Sorry I scared you. It's nothing. Oh, you got a checklist? You must be new here. Uh, yes. 
My name is Miku. No, really, I'm serious. Nobody believes me, but it's my real name. My mother is Japanese. My dad met her when she was building. Well, it wasn't him who was building, he's an engineer. And he was working on a nuclear power plant there, or a dam, or a bridge, whatever. She was talking so far she swallowed half the words she tried to pronounce. I'm Semyon. Great! Want to be in our club? It's only me here now, but it will be two of us then. Do you play anything? When I became antisocial, I brought a guitar and learned a few chords, but then I forgot about it since I quit everything that required more than a couple of hours to learn. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything like that, really. Oh, it's okay. I'll teach you. Maybe a trumpet, for example. How about a violin? I know it all, honestly. There was no point arguing the orchestra girl, since there was a only another cascade of words waiting to blast at me. Hey, I'll think about it. Can you just sign this for? Can you just sign it for now? Yes, yes, sure. Give it to me. But sure to come around. I sing too. I'll sing you some Japanese folk songs, or maybe if you're not into that, something more con contemporary. <laughs> Thanks. Gotta go now. Of course. Come anytime. The end of her sentence stated inside. It might be nice to hang around with a guitar in evening, but in such company. I turned to leave and came face to face with the whistle. She eyed me suspiciously. Why did you come? The checklist. Got it signed? Yes. Then move it. Alyssa went inside and I hurried to leave the place. I went to the clubhouse. To tell the truth, I never really liked ex extracurricular activities. At school, I used to find an excuse to skip extra classes. At university, I had no interest in participating in a school student cancel council. I wasn't interested in boxer, boxing, aerial modeling or sewing. So I came here just to check off the box. Nobody was there. I found myself in something like a heart of a junior rowboy enthusiast. There are wires and simple printed circuits scattered everywhere, chips, and on a table pr proudly stood an what? Oscillograph. I heard voices from another room and then two pioneers appeared. But one was electronic, the other one I didn't know. Hi Samoyon, we've been expecting you. It seems he knows everyone about every everything about everyone or everyone about everything. Why were you expecting me? Well of course, because you came to sign up to our cybernetics club, didn't you? He didn't let me answer. And this is Shrik. He's in charge here. I assume there's only two of you in the club? Well, you can say that it's three now. Sh Shurik came up to me and excessively assess offered his hand. His face was somewhat familiar. Welcome to the club. Yep. Now I'll show you around. Make yourself at home. Uh, guys, I just wanted to... We're always welcoming new members. He said it in such a way that the anthem of the Soviet Union so suddenly started playing in my head. It's amazing. I even remember the words. In the first grade, I had a textbook with the lyrics in the back. Uh, no, I just wanted you to sign my checklist. Yep, you sign up to the club, we'll sign your checklist. He grinned. I was getting ready for a long, boring argument, but then I heard someone enter. I looked back and saw Sylvie. Ah, Simeon, I hope they're not giving you any trouble. She narrowed her eyes, looking at the future of the motherland's robot robotics industry. I know these two. They can. Well, you know, actually, I just need to get my checklist signed. I decided to take advantage of the situation. No problem. Give it to me. Sylvie took the paper and marched up the shirk. Sign it! Hold on. We're not done yet. You're done. Sign it now! She gave Shurik such a threatening look that it made him lose every possible objection. He wrote some squiggles on the checklist. I thanked Sylvie, then I moved on in a mellow mood. What's the point of visiting the infirmary? My health was fine. The fresh local air clearly did me some good. I felt fresher than usual. But I just have to visit it. I answered. A common infirmary, like my school doctor's room. A middle-aged woman sat at the table. Obviously, she was a nurse. She gazed intently at me and she 
assessing me while continuing to write something. Well, hello, Pioneer, said the nurse without being distracted from her work. Good afternoon, ma'am. I have something. Sit down, please. I looked around the room. On the couch. I sat down. Strip. She said all of it with an even tone. What for? <laughs> to inspect. To a, a school late. Uh, to check on your health, you know? By the way, my name is Violetta, but you can call me Viola. She turned to me. What are you waiting for? Strip! But I have no health issues. I've got this. I neatly gave her the paper. Later. She took the stethoscope off her neck, seeming like she intended to probe me with it. But then someone knocked on the door. The nurse called unwillingly. Come in. In a moment, the door opened widely and electronic rushed inside. Oh, and I spelled it wrong in the last one. Hello? I, I fell during the football game. Nonsense, of course. I'm, I'm okay, but oh god. There was a massive bruise under Electronic's eye. I doubt that this could be a football injury. Sit down, I'll have a look, she said to him. And you, pass me your checklist. The nurse quickly signed it and continued. If something hurts, come to me immediately, Pioneer. I decided not to answer, went outside, and went out, closing the door behind me. That nurse is surely something else. Look, wrong button. Actually, I love reading, but spending my time in the library under the current circumstances was well beyond my scope. So I'd better hurry up with this checkpoint. As I stepped inside, a memory from my childhood emerged in my head. It was very vivid. I'm seven or eight years old. I'm at the library with my mother. While she's looking through the books I might need for my studies, I'm sitting in a corner looking through their collection of comic books. Back then, I didn't know why they had so many, or why couldn't I take some with me. The notion of collective property was something my mind hadn't grasped yet at that age. However, back then, the whole concept of property was pretty hazy to me. This memory seemed even stranger now while I was sitting, standing in this particular camp where they might have managed to build communism in three years. Soviet symbolism was all over the place and the shelves were full of related literature. Of course, I wasn't planning to read any of these. Getting acquainted with a full collection of books by Marx was the last thing on earth I would think of. Where's the librarian? I didn't spend much time looking for her. I looked closely. Short hair, thick glasses, rather cute face. She was snoring so peacefully I couldn't just wake her up. I can wait. If she doesn't wake up in half an hour, maybe then. I couldn't just sit there, so I took a random book from the nearest shelf. Arthur Shulman heard The World as Will and Representation. I opened it roughly in the middle and started reading. The life of a man with its endless upkeep, wants and suffering, is to be regarded as an explanation and paraphrase of the procreative pro pro act, i.e. the absolute claim of the will to live, and furthermore, it is also the reason a man owes nature his debt, and thinks with ex anxiety of this debt. It is not the evidence that our existence involves guilt. At any rate, we always exist from time to time, paying with death for our birth. We always exist and alternatively bear all the joy and sorrow of life. Since neither of both can pass us with, without some effect, that is a result of a stated with will to live. Thus the fear of death, which in spite of all the miseries of life holds us firmly to it, is really elusive, but just as elusive in, is the impulse which has attracted us into it. This attraction itself may be seen objectively as a mutual longing glances of two long lovers, that a purest expression of the will to live in its affirmation. How gentle and tender it is. It wants happiness and quiet pleasure and mild joys for itself, for others, for all. Someone knocked on the door. I closed the book quickly and put it back in its place. What a nice habit, knocking on the door. I should pick it up. It was Lena. Oh. Hi. I smiled. Hi, hey, I uh, just want to return a book. She had a copy of Gone with the Wind that I saw yesterday. Oh. Oops. <laughs> oh. Xenia is sleeping. I'll come back later. I'm awake. 
I turned around in surprise and looked at her. She eyed me closely from behind her table. What is it you wanted? I needed you to check here. Give it here. She quickly signed a paper and gave it back to me. She had this look on her face that made me want to keep quiet. Lena came up to her to return her book. I think Cena and went out. <sighs> Finally, I got all the signatures. Now to go back to Olga and give it to her. She was sitting in front of her cabin reading a book. Doesn't look like a good role model for the perfect pioneer that she was planning to turn me into. I wonder if her responsibilities extended beyond giving fiery speeches at lineups, scolding Eulala, and getting involved in my moral, physical, and ideological growth. Here. I offered her my checklist. She placed it in her pocket without even looking at the signatures. Great! I could have signed myself without going anywhere. Perfect! So did you meet our nurse? Yes. For some reason her question sent shivers down my spine. Which club have you signed up for? I didn't... I need to think first. That's a pity. It's vital for you to sign in somewhere tomorrow. Of course. Sure. Right, it's time to go to dinner. About time I was getting hungry. I headed to the canteen together with Olga. I looked at the sky and noticed the sun was already setting. On the porch stood Alyssa, Electronic, Eulala and Sylvie. As we came up, I heard what they were talking about. And never call me Davachi again or you'll get another one. I didn't call you that. You're hearing things. He did. He did. I heard it all. You weren't even there. I was. I was in the bushes. Come on, you guys. Stop it. So it wasn't a football injury electronic suffered earlier today. The nurse did a good job, but I couldn't even see his black eye. Olga came up to them and asked about the ruckus. What happened? Alyssa and she's cough. I didn't do anything. She shrugged with empathy and went inside. Right, dinner time. I entered last. There weren't too many free seats. There are a few few free chairs near Lissa across the canyon, but I'd sooner stuff for a week or two than risk my head near her. There was also a seat near Yula, but I'm not into traditional Chinese whatever crawls cuisine. Finally, a free chair next to Miku. Looks like I'll have to pick my p poison. You mind if I sit here? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, no, I don't mind. I mean, yes, you can sit here. I sat down. Look, it's bucket wheat today. Do you like bucket wheat and chicken? I don't like chicken. Well, not that I don't like it. But if you'd ask me, what would I prefer? Say, strong knoff, beef, or rugged? No, maybe just a hamburger or a rump steak. Do you like rump steak? I'm not that picky about my food. And that's the simple truth. Oh, is that so? But the desserts, you know, they aren't really good. I like ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I just love 48 care packs. And here we go. Lenin Grotsko. Oh, sorry. I keep talking about myself. Maybe you like Eskimo better. And dinner was starting to get on my nerves. Thanks to such company. And I'm not the kind of person that can just ignore someone who's talking to them. Even her. We're at the same table after all. You know, I once brought a waffle cone and sat eating. And then you know what? I found a screw there. A real screw. Can you imagine that? Or was it a bolt? I don't really know. Screws are those that you tie with screwdrivers and bolts are those that you turn into a wrench with a wrench, right? If there was a speed eating contest going on, I will probably be in the top three winners by now. Right, I'll be going. Enjoy your meal. I got up and headed outside. Mika, you were saying something, but our words are drowned by the crowd of loudly dining pioneers. I went out and sat on the stairs waiting for my dinner to settle down a bit. I just sat there and watched night falling. Everything is so lively here during the day. Kids laughing and yelling happily, fleeing and running around, constant chatter, games going on and swimming at the beach. But after dark, the camp changes entirely. The sound of day was sought for silence, only now and then broken by crickets chirping or a night bird. The camp was going to sleep. 
In every shadow you could see things, maybe a ghost or a spirit of the forest or a wild animal. A human being would be the last thing they expect. That is how it looked last night and now. The locals followed their routine very strictly. In the day the camp was theirs, and at night it belonged more to the forces of nature than to humans. Someone touched my shoulder. I looked back. It was electronic. Let's go play cards. Cards? Yeah, I invented a new game, a good one. Good, like how? Well, first we go... First we got to find the cards, and I'll tell you. Then go find them, what's the problem? Only Olga has them, and she won't give them to me. Why so? Well, the last time when we... Olga and Sylvie came out onto the porch. Olga. Simon, I just want to ask you about the possibility of getting playing cards. Actually, for what purpose? We invented a new game. Not we, you did. What game? I need the cards to show you. Hmm, I don't like this. Well, if Samuel is with you, then perhaps it's okay. But to be really honest, we'll go fetch them together, Olga. Okay, so should I go get the cards for Sylvie or go along? Uh, go alone. Go along. Uh, let's go with Sylvie. If you don't mind, sure, let's go. We headed towards my cabin. Roughly halfway there, Sylvie stopped. Hey, I just remember the cars are in my cabin. Good timing. And where's that? It's just down this road. Let's go. Hmm. We reach a cabin that, in fact, look more like a trailer. Just wait here a minute. I'll be right back. It took her just a few seconds to come back. There. She showed me a deck of pretty worn out cards. Then these must be marked in and out. That's unsportsmanlike. What happened to fair play? Tell me about it, it's hard to cheat when you don't know the rules. Shall we go? Let's go. Hmm. On our way back I decided to try and find out about something. How long have you been here? In this camp? About a week. I see, and where did you come from? I come, I'm from the north. That is, the cold north. She looked at me and smiled. Looks like nobody in this camp is inclined to answer even the most innocent of questions. I tried to approach her from another angle. And what do you like? What do you mean? Well, your hobbies. Oh, I like nature. Strange. She's not very talkative today for some reason. Nature. I see. Want to become a natural historian? More like a normal historian. I was always interested in our nation's history. That would suit her well indeed. It appeared that among all the locals, she was the only one who had nothing to hide. What if she came here just like me and simply could not trust anyone enough to tell? I had tried testing the what waters. And why did you choose this camp? I didn't. My parents got a voucher for me from their work. Another failure. Well, if you could choose. It's nice here. I don't think I would choose some other place if I could. Here it's like you're becoming another person. That wasn't how I saw it. What do you mean, another person? It's just that there's so many possibilities. You can learn so much. Meet so many new interesting people here. Now she started to sound like our chief, which raised a red flag for me. I decided to stop with the questions. For now. When we came back, Olga told Sylvie, I just remembered that the cards were at your place. It's okay, we got it. Good, good. Sylvie and Olga went inside. I was going- Oh god, sorry. I was going to follow her, but someone grabbed my hand. Alyssa. Her gaze sent a shiver down my spine, not a nice one. You want something? I asked carefully. You're going to play this stupid game? Um, yes, something wrong with that? Nope, nothing. She was turning to leave, but then suddenly looked back and smiled. So you play cards? Uh, a little. I couldn't figure out what she wanted. Shh, so only Durak and that's it? As if you're a poker star. Well, yes, technically. Then you don't have a chance. Why? Because. So you know the rules? Of course. Well then, you'll have the upper hand. I couldn't see why... Why would we go on talking in motion towards the door? Why do you keep trying to leave? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Let's make a bet. What do you mean? You're such a slowpoke. The cards, what else? 
and what do you want to bet on? That I'll win. That's quite a possible outcome. I agree, Karma. So are you afraid? No, I'm not. I'm not big on bets when I don't like my chances. And you're and you're not big on taking risks too. Such an astute observation, I'm impressed. Right then I No you're not. Now what? I sighed in exhaustion. She's starting to annoy me with her rubbish talk about some pointless bet. If you won't bet with me, I'll tell everyone that you try to subdue me. What? You heard me. I could imagine her doing this. Don't be stupid. Who's gonna believe you? I've been here less than two days besides. Want to try your luck? Right. And what will happen if I win? I won't tell anyone anything. And if I lose? Slowpoke mode again? I'll tell everyone you try to subdue subduce me. I told you already. So you're telling me now that I have to work to prove that I didn't do something when I didn't actually do it? If that's how you want to look at it? Not a simple decision. On one hand, it was stupid to agree. I didn't know the rules and gambling was my thing. On the other hand, she could really make my life hell. Then again, can I even trust her? She can do it even if I win. So have you made a decision? I was going to answer, but suddenly Alina came around me, around me from behind. What? Nothing. Lena hurried inside. So? Uh, you know what? I'm bored. I'm tired. Let's bet. I may regret it a hundred times. Fine, I'll do it. She smiled. But if I win? Yeah, yeah, or fair, no cheating. Alyssa turned, went up the stairs and inside the canteen. Why am I doing this? Because she can set me up regardless if she wants to. Since she decides to anyway. I let her heavy side and followed her through the door. Okay, I'm not very good at this game. Inside, everything was ready. A few pioneers stood here and there chatting. The tables were moved out of the way to make room for police and spectators. I looked around. Something was going on in the far corner. When I came closer, I saw a large piece of paper with a diagram drawn on it. My name was among the players. And who came up with all this? I patted an electronic who was standing near. Well, of course, it was your most humble servant. He bowed to me jokingly. This made me uncomfortable to the point of squirming. And why in the world am I among the players then? I was disappointed. A few seconds ago, I thought I had a slim chance to evade this tournament. Then I wouldn't have to fear Alyssa's revenge for losing the bet with her. But now that hope was gone. It was pure coincidence. Yeah, right, coincidence, except that I was already acquainted with every one of the contest contestants. While there were a few dozen other pioneers standing in the room, I was seized by anxiety. It's the feeling of being watched while standing in an empty room with no windows and doors. Will there be a prize? I asked him lazily. I wanted to distract myself with a pointless conversation. Electronic was about to answer. Shit. Man, I'm doing awful tonight. When Yulala came out of nowhere and started jumping around him. Prizes, prizes! I heard something about prizes. Do you know what is the main atheus of the Olympic Games? Uh, what? No. You'll understand when you grow up. Oh, man, I'm feeling sick. <laughs> she made a wary face and jabbed the electronic in her ribs. So what about the prize? Well, I don't know. It's not up to me. He made a helpless gesture. Really, if they came up with this stupid game, at least they could give the winner a chocolate medal or something. Yulala suddenly jumps and rests off to somewhere. I wish I was that optimistic. So what about the rules? Wait a bit. Not everyone is here yet. I looked around at Kenny, Alyssa, Sylvia, Lena, Miku, and Shurik were here. It seems like everyone is here. Not everyone. Zena isn't here. Does he feel uneasy or is it just me? She's not here, so what? Pick someone else instead. No, I can't do that. He answered slowly. I decided not to ask exactly why he can't do this. Well, go fetch her or something. I don't know. He can't go. He's a host of the event. The camp leader appeared as if from nowhere. But Olga, oh, uh, electronic rind. Simeon will go. Right, Simeon. 
She looked at me and smiled. Of course, who else? Where is she? In the library, I guess. Okay. I drag my feet towards the door. Please hurry. What's the electronics problem anyway? Night is coming soon. I was going to save my time, so I slowly paced towards the library. But I found Xenia before I even expected. She was sitting on a bench at the square staring at Jenda, who was silent as always. What are you doing here? Everyone is looking for you. Sit in here, as you can see. She frowned. Well, let's go. I don't want to. She looked away. <clears throat> Why not? I don't want to. I sat beside her. Listen, I don't like the idea of this contest myself, but we can't just let everyone down. I surely didn't sound like myself there. A couple of days ago, I wouldn't even think of saying something like that. Senna looked at me with surprise on her face. So everyone is waiting for me? Isn't that exactly what I said? Yes. I won't go anyway. She frowned and hid her face. But why? I guess she'd be my arms wandering. I don't know how to play cards. So what? Same problem here. Then how can you play? What, you can only do things that you read about in books or something? Of course. She was surprised. And what if you end up in Antarctica and have to rely on hunting polar bears to survive? Polar bears don't live in Antarctica. Zena smiled. Doesn't matter, it's just an example. Come on, it's not like someone's life depends on a result. She took her time to think. I just don't want to let everyone down. Right. I agreed sarcastically. And don't you think anything funny about that? I didn't get what she meant, but anyway. Obviously everyone has their weak spots. <coughs> In a minute we both were back at the canning. Everyone looked at electronic. So, he cleared his throat. <coughs> Each round consists of one game. In case of a draw, you play, replay the game. After this, the loser drops out and the next round begins. Since the number of volunteers looked at me, since the number of players is just eight, we we'll have only three rounds. Is everything clear? The crowd cheered. Woo! And what are the prizes? The prizes, what are they? Uh, Eulala, cut it out. Sylvie stepped forward and tried to catch Eulala. I won't rest until the prize is mine. Seemed like this girl alone had enough energy for a, wa a warp jump to Alpha Senatari. Prizes, prizes! She repeated over and over. Stop it! Sylvie tried to reason with her. Electronics seemed to be getting dizzy from all the running round. Let's start already, I said calmly and added to Yulala. But you won't get any prizes. Looks like my argument got through to her, so she took her place. Sylvie followed her, giving me a grateful smile as she passed. My pioneers finally settled down. I approached a table that Lena sit, sat behind. You don't mind? She looked up and blushed. Don't worry, I don't know the rules myself. And how can I be sure that it's not only myself? I sat down. Turns out we'll have to play the first round together. Yes. Finally, Electronics started to explain the rules. Um, because I haven't played this in like 50 years, we're going to play the tutorial. Okay. Look at the cards carefully. There are exactly six of them in front of you. I hope everyone here knows how to count. Now you can look at them. After everyone has had a look at their cards, the electronic moved on. The rules here is sim uh, similar to poker. I hope everyone knows how to play. I know the rules, but wasn't so sure about the others. First of all, it's a top card. Then one pair, then two pairs, then three of a kind. And so on, no flushes or straight so. In first round, you choose a card, which you would like to take from your opponent. In turn, your opponent can choose to swap two of his cards around twice. If you can choose not to do so, if he doesn't need the card which you are taking. Take a note here that your opponent can see which cards are trading in places. In the next step, your opponent takes a card he chooses. And so on, I think it's pretty clear. It wasn't too clear to me. Hey you, Einstein! Yulala yelled at him from her table. I don't get a thing. You'll figure it out as we go. The electronic went to the table with a diagram, leaving Yulala to s smolder in solitude. You go first. I hoped I could get my mind around the game fast enough. Lena more 
perplexed than usual reached out for my cards. So, yeah, I don't know this game. In the middle of the table, her hand stopped. Will you? Oh, yeah, I should be protecting my card. What was the electronic said? To try to confuse my opponent, I can swap two of my cards twice. Or can I choose not to? Should I protect it or not? By the way, I can also agree to give her the card she chose straight away. Otherwise, Lenny can change her mind and take another card if she wants to. Or she might not. No, you can have that. Because I don't need that shit. How the hell do I give it? Things were becoming clear. God damn it. Or at least comprehensible. Now it's my turn. I can take my card from her or I can choose another one. Then I can try to protect her card. But if I watch her closely, I can take the card I choose regardless of her movements. I made it! Alright. Electronic was silently watching our game, nodded in approval. Looks like now we're getting somewhere. Now, during the round, opponents trade cards three times. Keep an eye on each other. Penetrate your opponent with your eye. I chuckled, penetrate. What's so funny? Oh, never mind. I tried to keep a straight face. He stared at me for a moment, then moved on. Ah, uh, then we turn the cards up to see whose hand is better. Electronic went back to his diagram. Should we play it or just skip? Oh, let's let's skip it and win against Alyssa. For lols. So I'm not in the mood. Hooray, I won! Don't let Alyssa know who rules the ro roost around here. I did so good. That means that betting with her wasn't a waste. Now the only thing left is the hope that she will not spread that false gossip because of her loss. Oh, my hand is cold. Suddenly I got to decide to celebrate my own victory and have a dip at the beach. To tell the truth, I do not really know how to swim, but the possibility of diving into the cool water under the moonlight seemed to seemed attractive. After all, I spent the whole of my life of no, not my life, and spent the whole of yesterday in my winter clothes. And surely you could nicely wring the sweat out of me. In the evening, no one should be here, so I took off my, all my clothes except my underpants and entered the water. If only I knew, I would have taken my swimming trunks along. Usually it was enough for me to swim for 15 to 20 meters, but this time the, the fury of my victory spurred on to break this record. I swam slowly and tactfully, watching every movement on my arms and legs and keeping my br breath steady. Shit! All of a sudden, wham! A strike on my back sent me underwater. I started to drown, but managed to force myself to jump out and grab the nearby boy. Bitch, please! I turn to see Alyssa swimming after me. What the hell are you doing? What am I doing? Hailing the winner? And what if I start drowning? Well, I'll save you. Uh, of course. It was just too dangerous to stay here. She could easily sink me again. I got all my strength and swam to the shore. I slowly started to catch my breath. Beach sand stuck to my body from head to toe. After some time, Alyssa came out of the water. You know you swim well. I wouldn't say so. Yeah, you too. Well, wasn't that obvious? I said nothing. You won twice against me today. That means I'll forget two of your debts. What kind of debts is she talking about? It looks like Alyssa had a problem with evaluating reality. Her hand is getting freaking freezing. Thanks a lot. I said sarcastically. You know, you're not as much of a loser as I thought. Alyssa was wearing a swimsuit that perfectly emphasised the beauty of her figure. Well, taking into account all the flaws in her personality, at least this advantage of hers couldn't be taken away. Since when did I become a loser? She smiled cunningly. What's wrong? Aren't you one? Of course not. And how would you prove it? I don't have to prove anything. Oh, so is that it? She said without any anger. Yes, that's it. The silence was expected. A light wind gently played with the waves, sending them to the shore and taking them back after. Alyssa was still looking 
through me as if it seemed she completely forgot about my presence. Hey, Earth to Alyssa. Her lost look immediately switched back to her normal one. Anyway, bye bye. She picked up her clothes lying nearby and left. <laughs> it was late, but I decided to spend a little more time lying on my back and stargazing. After all, I didn't have that many opportunities for that before. Or simply try to avoid every opportunity. Well, if we think about it, the light from faraway stars reach us only after millions of years. Right now, I can see the star because it was shining back then, long in the past. And now the star is gone, already exploded. Wait a minute, she took my clothes too. I got up and looked around the beach. No doubt about it, Lisa took my pioneer uniform. Damn it. And I was just stunned to think that maybe she's not too, so spoiled. I need to come up with an idea quickly. Certainly I could go and complain to old girl but not my wet underpants. I don't know which cabin Alyssa lives in either. And knocking on every door is certainly not a good idea. Maybe I have to go to Sylvie. Yes, of course, at night wearing my underpants. The only thing missing is a rose in my teeth. Overall, it looks like I am screwed. In any case, I have to do something. I was not like... I was lucky not so... <laughs> I was lucky not so much time had passed since she left, so I could still catch up with all this. Hurry up. In the blink of an eye, I found myself at the square. To my great surprise, this was sitting on a bench, apparently bored. She had already changed. Give them back. Yeah, sure, take them. She muttered with a guilty tone and handed back my uniform. Hmm. Don't think I was waiting for you on purpose or anything like that. Alyssa turned her back and sat off, set off towards the cabin's easy pace. I was left standing re revered to the spot. I didn't expect such a twist. The guilt did its job. Perhaps. Fat chance. Anyway. It's better to keep away from her, and recent events do not change a thing. I headed to Olga's cabin. For the first time today, I finally felt how tired I was. There was no light in the window, so Olga must have been sleeping already. Strangely enough, she waited for me yesterday. I entered the cabin, quietly stripped and laid on the bed. When you think about it, my situation hasn't hadn't gotten any clearer today. In fact, I spent a whole day doing useless stuff. I would have never have even thought about doing something like this in the real world. Although I had plenty of time, how much time I would have here in total was still a mystery. Maybe an eternity or maybe there are only a few minutes left. I just didn't want to think about the past, about how I got to this camp. For the first time in a long while I felt really tired, not only emotionally tired, but also physically tired, psychologically tired and god knows how else tired. I just wanted everyone and everything to shove off, starting with my own thoughts. I wanted this mess somehow resolved by itself, or at least without my active participation. And what if I'm stuck here forever? Then I'll have to get used to it. So just like that, I, I'm not ready. Ahem. My, self, my consciousness slowly drifted away from me and it became progressively harder to concentrate on something distant. Perhaps it's better to wait until tomorrow. I rolled over and fell asleep. Day three. And this is where I'll be leaving the second part. I would love to thank you guys for watching. I think this is it, yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thanks. Heaps. Alright, I'll see you guys uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, but uh, yeah, see you guys later.